Hello everyone, this is Mr. Albert Ronan here again, and today I'm here with my breakdown of Gang Orca. Now, Gang Orca is a character that I thought would be really strong, but I- Sorry guys, I don't think he's that amazing. He has a few weaknesses, but he is still a really fun character to use. He's really unique buttons with his charged, like, armor moves, which are really special to him. Like this massive- Massive explosion move, which is just so fun to use online, and it's so satisfying to hit. <laughs> he can extend his combos in a lot of ways that I don't see people using online. And so yeah, I'm here to break down the character, and hopefully you enjoy. So, for his regular buttons, this is his regular attack string. It's not that great because you can't really combo afterwards, you can dash. Oh, you can't even dash cancel. And you never really do this, you can't get a plus ultra after it, it just does damage. In the air, his attack string is very similar in that you don't really get much after it. But it is actually his most damaging way to end an air combo, like without dash cancels. So you see that does 5000 damage, and that does 5001, and yes, that is including doing something like, um... This does more damage, but at the end of the combos, that will meaty blow earlier. So a lot of the time, you're actually going to end your combos with this, if you're worried about a meaty blow after a long extended combo. Okay, now for his red attack. It's actually really good, and it's really awesome looking how he just throws the opponent into the ground. And as you saw, it is very good in like a lot of ways. So one, it has really long range. He can do it from maybe around here-ish. He dashes up to the opponent and throws him into the ground. So not only is it long range, it's also quite quick compared to other red attacks. And you can combo off of it very easily since it's a floor splat. Like a wall splat but off of the floor. So yeah, very good red attack. He can get easy combos and it gives him good maneuverability because he can choose where he wants to stand to do his combo afterwards. So I can choose to face a wall in order to do something like this and oh, I missed. But you can like essentially ch uh, walk around and face a wall so that you can get a wall splat combo. So yeah. His yellow attack is this four hitting yellow attack. <coughs> It can be cancelled into other of his quirk. It can um, combo into it and out of it with his other quirk buttons. But okay, I'm being real with any gang orca players watching this video. Please stop doing this. This is not a gang orc to orca's optimal combo. It scales his combo damage so much. See a combo like this? Oh my god, I messed that up. Okay, wait. I'll do a simple combo that uses this. Also, stop doing this combo, but I'm just showing for demonstration purposes. So that was 6,800 damage. If I did something like this... Oops, what am I doing? That does more damage. <laughs> Please, stop doing his yellow attack. Like, this was more extended combo, it had more buttons in it, it did more things, but it does less damage, just because this yellow attack it has so much scaling on it, don't do it please. It is, although as its own button, it is very good as a yellow attack, um, it has really good tracking, so if the opponent's running around or even tries to sidestep it, a lot of the time it'll still hit the opponent, because it just, it has great tracking, just keeps going after the opponent, no matter where they are, if they keep moving, it'll turn and go towards them. And obviously that makes it good, because if the opponent's running around and they get hit by it, then it's good, because you can go in for a combo and you're getting a combo after a good move. Um, the same applies for his air attack, it's a little bit worse because you can't really combo off of it unless you're beside a wall, but it has the same aforementioned really good tracking if the opponent's trying to run around or what. So these, his yellow attacks are really good, like if the opponent's going, cr like, just like a Bakugo player, if they're going crazy and like running around and being super annoying, then you can just do one of these yellow attacks, it'll track them down and make them make them just calm down and block something for a moment. <laughs> and you can also go through buttons, obviously, with these. Okay, now for his quirk one. It is this projectile-like sonic scream thing. So, on its own, it's this like short-range projectile that kind of reaches the same distance as Jiro's um, quirk one projectile. Except, obviously, it's not as annoying. 
Um, you don't get combos off of it unless you dash cancel. So if I know that it's gonna hit my opponent, I can dash cancel. Oops. And get some pretty decent damage that way. It works the same in the air, he will always aim at the opponent, at the opponent, which is really good. And yeah, it's just a fast move that he will use in his footsies, if he doesn't want to commit to doing a button, because obviously buttons can be punished with sidesteps really easily in this game. Now, you can hold this button down, and it does a larger version, which actually stuns the opponent. So if you hold it down in the charge version, you can actually just run up and get a combo this way. And then get really good damage off of it, 11,300. And because it's in a stun like this, if you know the, the opponent gets hit by it, you can do his really amazing red attack and add some damage that way. And after the red attack, because the opponent gets held down so long, you can do some really interesting things like after that using his quirk 1 and really fun stuff. <laughs> so he has a lot of, what I really like about this character is interesting um, situational combo ability. So after they got hit by this, now they're getting hit by that. And this isn't usually something you're going to be able to do with a character, but because like you've got them held into the ground, and <laughs> what? <laughs> he got hit by the thing twice. But that's also a good thing to note about his um quirk one is that for some reason it like bounces off the of walls. So see, it hit him twice there, and it makes this a really interesting move because like even if you it misses your opponent or something. It'll just linger around and like... Wait, is it still around? Wait, we missed it. But it just floats around, you know, like a little jellyfish in the ocean. Just chilling, if it goes near a wall... Anyway, let's get close to the wall, that we go. If it goes near a wall, it'll just bounce off the wall. And like, come back in this direction. So it's really interesting to like, just keep throwing out multiple of these, so you have all these... It's one of his good screen control moves, because like, you can just have all of these weird moves like floating around on the screen and if they get hit by one of them then it's a full combo for you unless they get hit by two of them then it's a bit awkward but yeah really good moves he can use them like certain supports allow him to like use this as an extender for his combos but uh, yeah that can be a bit tricky but yeah it's a really good way especially after your combo is done if you've like ended a really long combo how do I get to do this? But essentially after you've done a long combo and you've ended in this I charge this up and then so I cancel his this into this button and then by the time they're out of the ground the projectile is flying at them and they have to block it so it's a really good way of enforcing his pressure after they wake up Okay, um, his Tilt Quirk 1 is this really interesting move, it's so iconic to Gangwalker in this game. So if you just tap the button, it releases this explosion, it's regularly, it's just kind of just like a normal armor attack for him, you know, you can dash cancel after it, get combos that way. Uh, his main, his bread and butter combo involves you doing a few hits into this, so it must be pretty good. Um, yeah, so not only is it great because it's a yellow attack, it has a huge, like, even in this version, you can't really see because <laughs> the camera can't even see it, but it has a huge hit bubble. It goes above and beyond, for, behind him and all that stuff, so it's a really good as the yellow attack, so even if the opponent sidesteps or tries to go behind you or something, it just hits all around him. It's, um, very safe on block, so if I have my opponent guard... It's very safe, it's quite hard to punish, and even if they do try to punish it, I can just dash cancel and I'm attacking out of it as soon as it, as soon as they stop getting hit by it. So, very good attack, but this isn't where it stops, so he can actually hold it down for as long as he wants, and <laughs> this is where it becomes ridiculous. Oh my god, that was even a wall splat from there. I didn't get the wall spot. Even that was huge damage, guys, and that was mutilous. So, you can hold it down. So if I hold it down for a little bit... It'll do a bit more damage, see 4,500. But if I hold it down for the whole time until he just releases it, it does 6,000 damage. And you could... I don't know if you can see, but the radius on that thing is huge. There we go, 12,700 damage. Single dash can to up with a wall splat with this. But... Here, I'll try, I'll go about here, and this is still gonna hit the opponent from like here. It is huge! Oh, okay, not there. <laughs> but 
But, and remember that this is a dome around you, so there is this massive bubble of hitbox around you when you do this move. So there's no avoiding it. If you do this when the opponent's close, there's no possible way that they can avoid this, because they can't sidestep like all the way away from you, they can't sidestep sideways, they probably can't even run away in time if you start it when you're really close. So they just have to block this, and on block, it is, not mid air jump, guarding, on block, look at this, look how much guard meter that took, that was like 70% from this one move, look at his guard meter, it's nearly gone just from that, so not only does it do a ton of guard meter, it's also obviously completely safe, so if the opponent guards this, they cannot punish this at all, like look how far away they get launched, there's just no chance of them punishing you, and even if they do try to punish, you can use that opportunity to just dash in and catch them for trying to punish you. And going for a combo. So yeah, this is just such an amazing move. It is so great for an opponent that is running around or doesn't know their own good, is pressing too many buttons. Like, see this guy that's running around, I do this, and if you put, you think that they're gonna press buttons, and then they realize, oh crap, wait, I can't guess, press buttons. Unlike other yellow attacks where you can do, like, a dash cancel or run away or something, there is no escaping this. It's so huge, they're like, they need to, like, pull on, like, run away in order to escape it. It does huge damage, it's just such a great move for just controlling your opponent, and I'm sure... I just love doing this move so much, it's so satisfying to hit. You can cancel it into his, um... Plus Ultra 1. Oh, that might not have hit there, that was a bit weird. But under normal circumstances, you can. So, yeah, it's just a huge move, has a huge hitbox, and it's armored, so the opponent has to respect you when you do it. Oops, what happened there? I messed up the combo. And obviously, as you've been seeing, it leads to a wall splat pretty consistently. Oh, dash cancel, where are you? Qua? What? What happened there? But yeah, if it gets a wall splat, then you even get <laughs> even huger damage. I don't know if that's even a word, but I'm gonna use it. Ah! But yeah, you saw before, huge damage combos off of this. There we go, 12,800, super easy damage for a single dash cancel. Okay, um, oh, I haven't even covered the air version of this. So in the air, if you tap it, it'll do a few hits, unlike the ground one which only does one. If you hold it down for a little bit, it does more hits and does substantially more damage than the regular version. So from 3200 to like 5000, and if you hold it down the whole time, just like the original version, it's a huge hitbox. It also hits the opponent like tons of times. It has a bit of a smaller hitbox, but it's a lot more satisfying because it has like 10 hits in it and it does a lot more damage. And obviously both of these you can combo off of, I'd just like to mention. If you dash cancel, you can combo off of them, even without a wall splat, and get huge damage. So like if you know your opponent's gonna get hit by it... There we go, 10,400 for single dash cancel. And the same applies in the air. And so this move in the air is actually what he's going to use when he's extending his combos in the air. So once you've done two hits into this grab, which we'll cover later, you charge his... So you don't want to just do two hits into the grab and then do the regular tilt work one, because that won't do much damage. You want to hold down the tilt work one for just enough time. You don't want to hold it for too long as well, or else the opponent will just land on the ground. You, you want to hold it for the perfect amount of time that they're going to get hit by it, and you've also held it for a bit. As you saw there, I didn't mean to do that dash cancel, but that's going to do a lot of damage to end your combo. 7,200 damage for a combo ender. Or, and you can also dash cancel. Oh, I don't want to cancel it though. 
Okay, now I can't dash cancel. What? And you can get huge damage and extend your combos that way using it. So, let's move on to his next button. I talked about that for... I was speaking about that for quite a while. So, his quirk 2 is this grab that you've seen me using in his combos. It is a great wall splat tool. You can actually directionally um, make him flip around. So I can grab the opponent, and if I just hold the left stick down, he will flip around and throw the opponent the other way. This is really useful if you've gotten a combo like facing this way, and I want to turn around and do a combo. That was... Oh, that did, that did work. But yeah, if you want to turn around and throw the opponent into the wall, then you can, which is really good. It gives you a lot of opportunities to get wall splats by choice. Oh my god, why do I keep messing that up? But like, even if you are facing the wall, it's just a great wall splat tool, because it launches them diagonally upwards and really far. So you can get good damage. Uh, you don't even have to do a dash cancel if you don't want. And yeah, since it's such a good wall splat tool, like when you get a wall splat, you don't even have to, um... Oops, what's happening here? Whoa, whoa! <laughs> but yeah, you ex can extend his combos with his red attacks and stuff. Um, this move you can also use in the air, and it works practically the exact same. Great wall splat tool, and yeah. But an interesting thing about this move, as as you were saying before, you can actually do the grab, and the throw in the air does a little bit of damage. So you're actually going to use that in your regular um, combos, and cancel before that last part hits into his tilt quirk 1 after you hold it down for a little bit. Because that gives you a ton of damage. And even on the ground, his most damaging combo starting situation is just that into the regular version of this, which seems like small damage, but it doesn't scale as much as something like this does. See, 6,900 damage. Whereas with this version... Oh, I messed that up, but it's still did a lot of damage. But yeah, that's basically this move. Obviously, it's very unsafe on block. It's 100% a combo move. If you know you're facing a ball, you just let it, let it happen, let it rip. Let, let... Oh my god, what am I saying? Get a wall splat. And yeah, very good combo tool. Um, you can also extend off of it meterlessly pretty easily with most supports. Oh no! <laughs> and you get pretty good damage for less dash cancels that way. Okay, now his tilt quirk 2 is this interesting move that I don't actually see a lot of Gengoka players use, but it's this, like, shark bite move, which is very unusual, but is good in a lot of ways. So, as you saw, it does a lot of damage, but you can actually combo off of it as well. So you can just do his regular buttons, and it's gonna combo. Um, you can cancel it into any of his buttons, I don't think they all combo though, so but yeah, obviously you're gonna do regular buttons after it. And get combos, but it's also really good because it reaches really far, and his regular attack string doesn't reach very far at all, which is one of Gengoka's weaknesses. And his regular attack string also doesn't have very good tracking. Like, compared to other moves, which like, if you're in the air, it'll go down to the opponent or something. A lot of the time Gengoka, his regular attack string just like, misses, like, so badly. It's one of his biggest weaknesses. It doesn't reach very far, and it doesn't track very well. But that's where this move is useful, because it has longer reach and better tracking. Unless... <laughs> unless this demonstration wants to screw me over. <laughs> Bakugo, come back! But yeah, it's a good move. It tracks down a lot of sidesteps and things. And, you know, that adds some damage to your combos. Actually, I don't think it does, because it scales quite a bit. But it's a good way of getting in on your opponent, because it reaches far, and yeah. Okay.
now that we're done with all of his but oh I'll talk about his plus ultra one quickly. It's basically just an even larger version of his held tilt work one. It's just a humongous version. It doesn't wall splat, but it does a huge amount of damage and it it just is huge. Like this thing is ridiculous. Oh, okay, maybe it's not as big as I thought it was. Lol, overcompensating. But you can combo off of like anything on the ground, even his like this. And this does a ton of damage, so if you if you ever get like one of his charged projectiles, you can go in for his red attack. And then go in for his charge this. And then go in for this. And you you're getting tons of damage <laughs> for a single plus ultra. That's pretty it. Pretty huge damage. And yeah, obviously, um, if you see that this is ever gonna hit, if you see the opponent press buttons or try and do anything and you re react, they're gonna get hit by it. Then you've just gotten a solid, like, 5,500 damage for a single plus ultra. That's pretty amazing. Um, and obviously if they're guarding, it's gonna break their guard. If you, if you notice that your opponent's gonna, like, block this... Oopsie. I'll get closer to the wall because it doesn't really work um, otherwise, but yeah. Oh, okay. I was wrong, you can't actually cancel it into his plus ultra on block. That's interesting, good to know. But yeah. It's basically just one of those really good high damaging YOLO, uh, like Todoroki's plus ultra one. It's just a huge thing that does a chunk of damage, so if you see your opponent in the air, or pressing any kind of buttons, just throw this out, get 10,000 damage, unbreakable. There's nothing they can do about it. It's just huge, massive hitbox, big damage. <laughs> That's basically it. You can combo off of it, like in some situations, especially with Kami, since she like really goes after the opponent. But a lot of the time I don't end up comboing off of it, because, I don't know, it just doesn't work out. Yeah, and it's really hard to time. But anyways, let's actually get into his combos. So, this is a bread and butter combo that I never want to see a Gang Orchid do. Please do not do this, guys. For some reason, Gang Orchid players always do this. They do this, and then the throw, and then dash cancel, and then doing stuff like this. And then they do like seven dash cancels into a combo like this. It's like, oh, okay. That is wrong in so many ways. One, don't ever do that many dash cancels in a combo unless it's going to win you the round. Or your Gran Torino, I guess. Also, don't use this yellow attack in his combo, because it scales a lot. If you're not planning on doing like a short meterless combo, it's just never worth it. It scales his the damage after it way too much. And also, you can combo after this a lot better than like dash cancelling after the throw, because you can actually cancel into his tilt block one. And the charged version of his tilt block one as well. So, let's get into what an actual bread and butter combo is with Gang Orchid. So two hits, into the grab, into the tilt quark one, dash cancel, two hits, into the grab again, into the held tilt quark one. I don't, oh, I didn't do it right. Sad. Don't hold it for too long, but also don't not hold it for too long. So, it can be a bit tricky, especially online with the, um, there we go. 9,800 damage, so you just have to hold the air version for a little bit, but not too long, or else they're gonna fall to the ground. <laughs> or recover. It's actually good if they recover, though. Actually, no, because you can't actually recover after that part. Yeah, they can't recover until they hit the floor. <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty good damage for a single dash cancel, especially for a character that's like slightly bottom tier. 9,800 damage is definitely respectable damage. Oh, I messed it up again. I didn't hold it for long enough. There we go. Pretty good damage. Um, you can actually dash cancel again if you want. Like if you, I know I said no, don't do too many dash cancels, but if it's gonna finish off your opponent, then it's worth it. To get eleven thousand eight hundred damage, which is pretty good damage. 12,000 damage, 2 dash cancels, pretty good, pretty good. Um, and obviously this combo route that he's doing can be done from anywhere, so like if you get a hit in the air, then obviously you're just going to do this part of the combo like a few times. That's actually even more damage, oh, thank you. Wow, that wasn't even a meaty blow? That was pretty amazing, wow. But yeah, he does actually get more damage from his combos if he starts in the air, because from the air you can actually do the charged version of his tilt work one. 
So as you see, 10,800 damage off of a single dash cancel in the air, and you're likely to get a wall splat and do a better combo than I just did for some reason. I don't know why I did that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. That's one thing, you want to make sure you don't dash cancel before he actually releases it. Whack. Yeah, they can be a bit tricky, but they're rewarding. Oh! Wow, I'm really showing them off really well. There you go. Oh no! No! <laughs> but that would have been like 13,000 damage. You get the roll. You get the. But yeah, as I was saying before, he also has really interesting situation damage. So if you ever see that you're gonna hit this, just do a dash cancel and. Well, yeah, you get a combo off of it. Maybe wall splat, maybe not. I should have actually there in in a situation like that. Oopsie, whoops. I mean, obviously, if you're facing a wall this perfectly, just let this rip, and then go in for a combo afterwards, after you get the wall splat. To get, like, 12,000 damage, no dash cancels. But, say, like, if you're not facing a wall, you can do a combo like this, by using a dash cancel. And it's gonna be pretty good damage off of a yellow move. And the same applies for his air version, obviously, as well. And also, with his projectiles, he can get some interesting combos. So you can't actually combo the projectiles into each other unless you're at the wall, um, because like they're only stunned for the amount of time that it charges up for, so you actually can't unless you're inside the wall. Um, broken record here. But you can actually really easily, like from any distance, so say if I've thrown this out, and I'm like running around, or I see that I get hit, I don't even have to react like on the dot, go in for a red attack, and then you can go in for something like this. Uh, not dash cancel, low. <laughs> because they're stuck in the ground for so long. There we go, 10,300 uh, damage. I think it actually might actually do a bit more if you just do a regular attack string, because that did meteor blow. Yeah, that's at 11,000 and it was less fancy. But yeah, he can get good do damage off of that. He can even just like obviously make him meterless. If he just jumps in the air. And get good damage that way. And yeah, he just has really good... I really like these projectiles. They're kind of like Jiro's projectile, but less annoying. Or maybe it's just because Gengorka plays so less annoying. <laughs> but yeah, you can get combos off of it. It doesn't stun the opponent for too long, but it does stun them for long enough to get pretty easy hit confirms off of. That wasn't a proper combo, I didn't hold it down for long enough. But you can see the point. Easy combos off of it. <laughs> There we go, 10,400 damage. Probably would have done more damage if I just did this. But I don't feel like doing it again. <laughs> and yeah, the same applies if you get a red attack. Um, you can go in for a combo, you can realign yourself to like um, do a combo into his um, grab. So that you're... Oh, actually, yeah, never mind. You're not going to get a wall splat if you've already done the floor splat. But yeah, it's a really good grab. You can go in for this to extend your damage. Um, if you want to get meterless damage, you can actually get it really good off of um. So like if I do something like this, I think this will all combo. And now I like, go in for the charge projectile again. Into this snap. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, it meteor glowed. But you see the point, he can get good meterless damage using this all of these really good combo tools if he wants. Oh yeah, man, that yellow attack is ruining my combos. 
Um, okay. I think that's basically, unfortunately, all I have to say for Gang Orca. He's a... He's a, oh, I don't think I would say he's a top tier character, but you can certainly make him work and make him strong. Oh, that was a fail. <laughs> I think... Yeah, oh wait, I haven't shown combos using assists. Let me do that quickly. So after you do a regular combo like this, when he's about to do the thing, bring out someone like All Might. Don't fail, because that's bad. Thank you. That was that's another example of how his attack string doesn't track very well. No, oh, what? It didn't hit properly. No. There we go. 10,400 damage, single dash cancel, using an All Might support. Obviously the same works with characters like Aizawa or whatever other Kami, Jiro. Yeah. He can extend his combos with this pretty easily. And yeah, that's, I think, now I'm... <laughs> Now I'm done, and yeah, that's all I have to say about Gang Orca. He's a really cool character with really interesting moves. I just love his Tilt Quirk 1, with the massive hitbox, and you can do it into his plus ultra as well. It's just so satisfying hitting your opponent. If they try to sidestep, then you punish them with this, or if they're just running around and they try and press a button, just hitting them with this massive, like, dominating. It's just really fun. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Gang Orca. Um, I actually do enjoy his gameplay, even though I have left him till pretty late in the list of characters that I've broken down. He is a fun character. I think he could use some buffs though. But yeah. Oh my god, I'm going on a long spiel at the end here. But yeah, anyways guys, Gang Orca is fun. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!